after you've done a big declutter, now you have to figure out what to do with all that clutter that you've rounded up. Most of us want to let go of our items in a mindful and environmentally responsible way. So in this video, we'll go over the best ways to reallocate your items so that your items get a good chance at having a second home. We'll also take a look at the not so obvious pros and cons of each option so that you know what's personally best for you and your situation. And then with this information, you can let go of your clutter in the best way for you and also that burden that comes with clutter and feel really good afterwards. Hi, my name is Mika and I'm a writer and a professional home organizer. Over the years, I've helped many clients figure out the best ways to individually dispose of their clutter. If you want more tips on your home, I have a book series coming out this summer on how to have good vibes in your home and I'll be sharing the content with you here on this channel. Please like and subscribe if you are interested in more information on how to better the feeling in your home and also if you find this video helpful. So first, we'll go over the pros and cons of donating. Some might surprise you. And then we'll go over a bunch of different ways to donate. Then we'll talk about the pros and cons of selling and then go over our selling options. Make sure to stay until the end because after we wrap up with our options, I will share with you two common traps that I see clients falling into after they declutter and tell you how to avoid them. All right, so when we talk about donating, first remember that one person's trash is another person's treasure and there's so much truth to that. If you're going to donate items, you wanna donate items in good condition. Like you don't wanna donate clothes with stains and things that are unwearable. Although I have a great solution for garments such as those, which we'll delve into in a couple minutes. The huge benefit of donating is that it's quick. It is out of your hands and it's not your responsibility or burden to have to do anything else with. You can trust that somebody else will take over and reallocate your stuff for you. You can then free up your energy and time to do something else that might be more fulfilling for you. Another huge benefit is that you're helping others. You're doing someone else a solid or perhaps many other people a solid and that in itself is important. I believe that when you do good things for other people, it comes back to you in another way, shape or form. Although that's not the reason to be doing good things for other people. I think it should just be an innate part of our lives. Even small things on a daily basis, smiling at a stranger, I think all that is just so important. But yeah, so donating, you'll help another person and that's a great way to dispose of your items for just even that reason. And financially, you might be able to benefit from donating, not just from a tax deduction standpoint, but here's where ironically and from a different perspective that you might actually be able to make more money by just donating your items rather than by selling them off one by one. This depends on your items and the opportunities available to you. If you just donate your items, then you free up the time that you would have spent selling those items to make money in another way. So again, it's highly dependent on what you have. So let's take an example. Say you spend six hours trying to sell a bunch of little things on eBay or Mercari or Poshmark and you net a net profit of $30. So we're just talking about a bunch of little small things. That means that you're making $5 an hour. Could your time have been better spent working at your job or hobby job or another way to generate more in that six hour span? For instance, if you happen to have a job and you get paid $20 an hour in a six hour span minus taxes, you would have made more than $30 in that time. And these are arbitrary numbers. So it makes you think, first, would it be more fulfilling to do something else for six hours? What is your time worth? And how do you feel about the clutter? Mentally, emotionally, physically, what if this clutter is distressing and anxiety inducing? Then you probably wanna donate your items and have that burden or responsibility to have to do something with it gone and out of the way. Or maybe you wanna do a mix of both where you donate some items and then you also sell some items. So we'll get into the sell portion a little bit later, but let's go over all the donation options that you have right now. Okay, so the first thing that we can talk about is donating towels, sheets, bedding, and old blankets. These are things that a lot of donation centers won't take, but who is really in need of them are animal shelters and some veterinarian clinics. Animal shelters could generally really use these items, so call ahead and then just see if they're accepting those, and most of the animal shelters will be so grateful. Now, if you have big items, then it would be worth your time to list it on Craigslist, OfferUp, which Let Go has now become part of OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, or any other online resource and say for free and somebody should call you very quickly. The other thing that you can do is put it right outside of your home with a for free sign. And in my area, generally, if you do that, it's gone within half a day. And if you do that, if you put something out that says free, you might actually make somebody's day. So somebody actually made my day a couple weeks ago 
because halfway down my street, somebody had put a bicycle, a beach cruiser out amongst their trash cans and it had a sign saying free on it. And there was a little sumo wrestler horn on the front. The bike was in good condition. I guess they just didn't want it anymore. And I thought, how cute, the sumo wrestler horn, because I'm half Japanese, so that's like kind of perfect, isn't it? So I took the bike a couple houses up to my parking area, and then I took that same note that said for free on it, and I wrote on it with a Sharpie, thank you so much. And I ran back down and I stuck it onto their trash cans. And I noticed that they had taken the note. But anyways, I love this bike. I got new handle grips for it. And then I also got a basket for my dog and I've ridden it several times now. In instances like this, I feel like putting something outside with a for free sign is a huge win-win for both parties. And just to be clear, I don't mean using the sidewalk as a dumping ground. I just mean putting one item out with a for free sign on it or even a group of small items. But the items that you put outside should be somewhat desirable and gone pretty quickly. And with this method, it's so easy for you and it's kind of like a little treasure hunt find for somebody else. So that's why I think it's a win-win situation. And don't forget to put a for free sign on it because otherwise people might not know whether they should be able to take it or not. The other way you can dispose of big furniture items is to contact various donation centers and a lot of them do pickups. If it's manageable for you, you can also drop the item off to Salvation Army, Goodwill, Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity actually has a store called V-Store and they deal in a bunch of big furniture items. For smaller items, definitely also Salvation Army, Goodwill, any of your local donation centers. You can also donate to domestic violence shelters. There's a lot of shelters around and you could usually google the ones in your area and then drop off to them. Women's clothes and children's clothes are often needed in those shelters. Also, churches often take donations and it varies from church to church so you might want to just call and double check. Now, if you have garments that are worn out or stained or kind of rendered unusable or maybe they're just very out of trend, you can drop them off at recycling centers. So H&M is a huge corporation that has locations worldwide and they have a recycling program. So you can actually drop off a bag of old clothes and for every bag of clothes that you drop off, they give you a coupon. So you get the coupon and then they take the bag of clothes and then they try to either redistribute it or reuse the fabric. So it's not just H&M too. There's other stores, check what's local to you. But like in my area, there's another store called Marine Layer. And I think for every five shirts that you donate, you get one shirt for free. But there's more and more stores that are starting to have recycling programs. So find some in your area and keep that as a really great option. That way the clothes don't end up in a landfill and the fabric is given a second chance. Okay, now if you have books, so you can definitely donate them to donation centers, but you can also donate them to your local library. And then this is technically not like a big library building as you would think of it, but there's something called small libraries. And I think there's various other names for it too, but they're the little stands that you see in neighborhoods. It almost looks like a mini treehouse or a bird feeder but they're little stands and inside you can put books and it's in many neighborhoods, but it encourages people who are passing by or children to read, but they're little mini libraries and they're located on sidewalks. So if you have one nearby you, you can put some books in there and you can also take some books if you want to read some. So that covers the options for donations and now let's get into the sell. So some people are all about the money and they can't wait to see what the turnaround is if they were to sell their own items. Meanwhile, some people feel a sense of anxiety just thinking about listing and selling their own items. So take into account which type that you are. One is not better than the other. They're just different types of people. So take into account which type you are, your needs, and how much time that you have to allocate to selling. And if you are to sell, do it immediately because if you don't do it immediately, it lingers. There's also the chance that things can sneak their way back in. So selling, does take some time, energy, and effort. The thing is, many of my clients say that they'll sell their items, and I come back months later and they still have not listed the pile. Some of them also seem anxious about it, like it's a weight on them. Closing things out is really important. So when you declutter, it's risky to do all the work and then leave things almost finished. 
risky in the sense that you might reincorporate some of your decluttered items back into your home and it would kind of diminish the hard work that it took to get your items decluttered. So if you realistically think that it will be a burden on you, like maybe you have many small items of kind of lower end value that you will have to spend a lot of time listing, selling, and then packaging up, you might be better off donating. But if you're the type who loves to sell things and there are people who really enjoy it, then you should lean towards selling your items. Then the question becomes, which items should I sell? Which platform should I sell them on? Which items are worth my time and the monetary reward on my time? And if you love selling, a minimal reward might be worth your time just because you enjoy it. It really depends on you. So many people have minimum thresholds. So some people will sell items if only if there's a profit of $20 or more. Others say, hey, I have fun doing this. So if I have a $3 profit and I get to sell something, that's great. So just something to think about, what is your minimum threshold? And you need to take into account net profit, not gross profit. So this is great because we'll lead right into eBay, which is a great example for this. So I've sold on eBay for a long time, since I was a teenager, and overall I love it. I'm one of the people who loves to sell things, but it can sometimes be stressful and I'll tell you why. So first you have to keep the supplies. You have to have tape and then uh, the packaging to send the things that you've sold. And you also have to take these supply costs into account if you're selling items with small profits. And with shipping increases, be sure to price carefully so that you don't go into negative by selling something. And again, we're talking about like low value items here. Just make sure that whatever you're selling is going to equate to more than the cost of your supplies, shipping, and eBay fees. Which it generally does, but then sometimes it doesn't, so it's well worth pointing out eBay has long been the auction house leader online, but there are also other places to sell clothes, shoes, and accessories, and Mercari and Poshmark are two great other options. Mercari is like a newer competitor to eBay, and with Poshmark, it's an app on the phone, and I really like their platform. Okay, so you can always have a garage sale or a yard sale, and if you live in a neighborhood, you can have a block garage sale or an apartment complex, everybody can group together and then have their own items and do individual, like a neighborhood garage sale. Garage sales do take a little bit of work, so be prepared for that, but they're a lot of fun. You do have to list your ads about a week or two out from your garage sale, and then it's good if you have street signs, and then afterwards you go take them down. You should have prices already in your head when you do a garage sale. And the great thing about doing a garage sale is that you can do your sale and then donate the rest afterwards. That way you know you gave it a try to sell your items and generate some cash, and then you can donate the rest and take it off of your hands so you kind of have the best of both worlds. When you're selling at a garage sale, you generally wanna let your things go for a low price. So we tend to value our things for a little bit more than they're worth for an inflated amount, and this is called the endowment effect. So keep aware of that and just let your stuff go because the point is to clear up space while generating some cash and little bits add up very quickly. Remember also that serious buyers usually come early and so you make much of your profit in the morning. Then people will come in waves throughout the rest of the day. You also should make sure to have cash on hand and change. So quarters, dollar bills, $5 bills, and $10 bills. Just enough to be able to give change to the people who are gonna pay you and don't have change themselves. You can also sell your items at a flea market. You have to rent a booth or a space so there's an upfront cost then you have to haul your items there and then set it up, but it's fun and it's definitely an experience if you've never done it before. You can also have an estate sale. You can put an estate sale together yourself or you can hire somebody who specializes in estate sales. They will take care of everything in terms of setting up and advertising, but they do take a percentage. And if you have antiques, you can sell them yourself on an online auction such as eBay or you can call an auction house that specializes in antiques they will usually ask for some details and some pictures and if they have a place for your item or items they will usually come out for an appraisal and also to buy them from you for you sports equipment if you have a played again sports around you they are a great place to sell your old sports equipment also facebook marketplace craigslist offer up and ebay those are all great places to sell your used sports equipment and if you have big items such as furniture or bicycles or anything that's heavy, then Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, those are all great places to sell your items. And then also Nextdoor, if anybody has that app, 
it's like a neighborhood or a regional thing, they also have a sales section. And if you have books, you can sell them on multiple platforms depending on what kind of books that they are, eBay, and also there are various online book resellers that can buy your book from you. And a website that I recommend is called bookscouter.com and it's kind of like kayak for checking how much you can get for a book. So there's all these online resellers and I think it even includes Amazon, but this, you'll type in your ISBN number or scan it and then it'll show you what everybody's buying it for if they're buying it. So instead of having to check multiple sites, you can just check this one site and it's very easy to use. So a lot of online resellers will buy your used books, but you can also take them to your local used bookstore. And some of the used bookstores also buy DVDs and CDs. Call ahead first because not a lot of them, just some of them do. Now in terms of clothes, you can go to different consignment shops. There's a lot of small local consignment shops. I could name like five in a 30 mile radius to me. Uh, so check your local areas. Two big ones that I think are nationwide are Crossroads and Buffalo Exchange. So when you go to a consignment store, sometimes they'll give you cash on hand as opposed to waiting for consignment. Consignment is when they sell it, then you split the profits. But sometimes you can just get cash up front and then you kind of just release the clothes to them to sell. So when you deal with consignment shops, don't expect a lot because they have to cover their expenses and make a profit. So don't be disappointed, but it's still a good way to get some cash back for your old clothes. Consignment stores can also be very picky. I remember going with a client not that long ago and she had cleared out so many of our clothes. Everything that we thought was potentially dated or didn't fit her very well, we put in big hefty bags that it just ended up being eight hefty bags, like big ones of clothes. We put them in her car and then we drove to Santa Monica to the consignment stores, tried to sell them. And it was shocking that no consignment store took one item out of all those bags. And I could tell she was so disappointed at the end of the day, but at least we had tried and now she knew. So we went to a donation center and dropped them off and those clothes will get a second life. But it was just shocking that day of how picky that the consignment stores could be. The positive aspect of that is that we decided we did get rid of the right items for her. ThreadUp is a popular online store that will buy clothes from you. They basically send you a bag and then you fill the bag and then you send it back to them and then they tell you what the payout is. I've heard mixed reviews about ThreadUp from clients. I've never personally used them, but I have a couple of clients that were so angry because they said they sent him bags of clothes and then I think they got like maybe $10, but other clients were really happy with them. So I think with ThreadUp is this, it is very easy because they send you the bag, you put all your stuff in, and then you send it to them. So at least it's out and done and out of your aura field, out of your energy field. It's not your responsibility anymore. The clothes will get a second chance and then whatever the return is, you will get. So if you are willing to think in that manner and it's more important for you to let those clothes go and the profit is just an added bonus to having the clear space in your home, then I would probably think about using ThreadUp. But honestly, I don't recommend them or not recommend them. Like I don't have an opinion because the reviews were so mixed that I've seen from clients. You can also hold a clothing swap party. It does take some effort, but it can be a really fun time. Some people really enjoy this if they have a good group of friends to do it with that are also trying to declutter their clothes. I've heard of it often being like a potluck style party where everybody brings their decluttered clothes and also a plate of food and then everybody eats together and then they take their time showing off their clothes and what they have that they've decluttered and then the trade requests and negotiations begin. Then if you have children's clothing, there's a store called Once Upon a Child, and it's a consignment store for children's garments. If you found this video helpful so far, please hit the like button, and please subscribe if you want to see more information like this. And now let's get into our bonus tips. The first thing that is just so important, so after you declutter, don't replace your items. Give yourself a chance to enjoy the space without buying anything new. And the reason that I say that, we subconsciously get used to the environment around us. And so we're used to the old status quo of having our places filled with a certain amount of stuff. So after you declutter, initially for the first few weeks to a few months, you might feel a little bit of a pool to want to fill it back up again. Don't do it, resist it. And an easy, very easy way to resist it 
or actually a way to totally mitigate and counteract that instinctive pull is to have gratitude. Conscious gratitude will completely offset that feeling. Have gratitude for the things that you already own and you'll realize that you have all that you need. If you rewind back to a year ago, how many things are in your life now that you wanted it to be? It's good not to look toward new, new, new and to appreciate what you already have because it is a mindset and that'll help you in the future to save your energy, to feel good and feel like you have what you need so then your moments aren't spent chasing buying new things and acquiring new things, but then you can, you're more likely to spend your moments on experiences and time with loved ones perhaps, or time for yourself. Gratitude is strong. And you may have heard this in other regards, that when you are full of genuine gratitude, darkness can't enter because there's too much light. I guess that's a whole nother topic, but have gratitude, appreciate the space that's opened up and the different feel of it. It has to feel different and it probably feels really good. Okay, and the other trap, I've kind of touched on it throughout the video because I think it's very important. Decide whether you want to donate or sell and do it immediately. If you're going to donate, donate to the best avenue for you immediately. Get it out of your home because if it sits there, it could trickle back in or you might start second guessing yourself or it's just an unfinished thing sitting in your home. So all that work has not yet been completed. And it's really important to close things out because if you just go seven eighths of the way, then it's still there and lingering. So let the items go as soon as possible. If you're going to sell them, list them as soon as possible. And so just a little tip. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe. And if you're interested in doing more decluttering, these two videos might be helpful and motivational. The 30 day minimalism challenge and how to declutter your papers. Thank you so much again. And until next time.